All right, so ladies and gentlemen, basically what I'd like to do is just kind of go over at least some of these problems, at least some of these problems for you guys just to get a little um, work on and to kind of help you explain. So um, again, the process, if you guys notice, the process that I wrote down is basically exactly the same as what we did for equations. The only difference is now we're going to graph the inequality. Now, as far as the differences between inequalities and equations, that all comes up into the solution. We're just not going to find a one single value. We're actually going to find a set of values. So therefore, we're going to graph the solution. And also, we have a little bit different notation. So that's why I wanted to list those up there. So make sure you guys have those written down. However, the process for solving an inequality, doesn't matter if this is an inequality or an equation, the process for solving is exactly the same. The first thing you want to do is simplify the side. So I'm going to work on this example here. And what you guys can see is, both sides um, are simplified. I can't do any. I can't apply distributive property or combine like terms like I um, like I could in one of these problems. So therefore, the next thing I'm going to do is then the next thing is to obtain the variable on the same side. Now this is, becomes very very important, especially when dealing with inequalities, because you have an option. You can either get rid of the two x on the right side, so by subtracting two x's on both sides, or you can get rid of the three x on the left side. And it doesn't matter which one you do. And especially for equations, you know, it, it, it really depends if you want to solve for x on the left or the right-hand side. However, in this case, I really want to stress solving for the variable to be positive. If you subtract a 3x on both sides, then that goes to 0. And then this becomes a negative x. We don't want to solve for negative x because it creates extra issues for us. But that's not wrong. You can still do it. You just need to follow um, the steps or the follow the form of when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you flip the sign, which, uh, which you can avoid if you have to. So the best thing I'd like you guys to do is let's solve for the x on the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. That eliminates the 2x by um, combining it to a 0x, which is 0. Leave me with x plus 4 is less than negative 6. Now we just, again, use our inverse operations. We see that our variable is being added by 4. So to undo that, I'm going to subtract a 4. And I now have x is going to be less than negative 10. Now, now what we need to do is represent our solution. Because x does not equal 10. x is all the values that are less than negative 10. So we got to think about what are those values that make that true. So when you're creating your number line, a lot of students always like to start number lines with 0. Well, that could be helpful. But what if this was like negative 100? We don't want to go all the way. So my recommendation is to start at your solution point. Then choose values to the left, which are going to be less than, and choose values to the right, which would be greater than. So this one would be like negative 9, negative 8, negative 7. These are all values that are greater. And these are values that are less. All right. Then at your solution point, what you guys are going to do is you are going to make a circle. All right. And we're going to determine if that circle is going to be included or not included. There's a couple two ways. The easiest way is to look at the sign. Whenever you have an inequality with less than or greater than, then it's an open sign, meaning the value is not true, is not a part of the solution at negative 10. You can also test that by plugging in negative 10 in for x. So if I plug negative 10 in for x, we're not going to have to do this every time, but I want to explain it because it's the first time. Is negative 10 less than negative 10? No. That's false. That's why it's open. It's not a part of the solution. Um, now we need to determine where to go ahead and shade. There's a couple different ways to go ahead and do this. Um, again, we could look at a test point. We could pick like an, any point on the line and plug it in. Negative 13, is that less than negative 10? If you owe me $13, do you have less money than if you owed me $10? Yes, right? So owing a large amount is actually less, um, less in value. So therefore, that is true. So you always shade towards where it's true. And then put the arrow because the graph is continuing. All numbers to the left are going to make this true. If it over here would all be the values that are false. You can also look at the inequality symbol. As long as you solve for the variable on the left hand side, then the inequality symbol is also going to point to the values. And I always like to say it out loud. That's why I provided you guys with the less than, greater than. It's just basically saying x is less than negative 10. What are the numbers that are less than negative 10? That's going to be all the values to the left. Does that make sense? Should be a little bit of review from your algebra one class. 